All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I'm using this little road as a microphone because I feel a lot more comfortable talking to a mic opposed to just a camera. I don't know. Anyways, as you saw from the title of this video, this is my list of things that I loved using this year. So this year has come to an end. It flew by super fast. It's been a wild ride and I've enjoyed every single bit of it. Also, by the time this video's up, it's already probably 2023. So happy new years to you and your family. So I'll be talking about a couple of pieces of gear that I loved using during the year for my freelance work and for YouTube and just for creating content in general. Some of the gear I will say is older or not the newest model, but me, just like many others that watch YouTube or working freelancers out there, we don't get the opportunity to get the newest, latest and greatest pieces of gear or cameras or lights or whatever. Uh, that's out there. So I want to present this to you guys from a humble freelancer videographer that's out there working and uses what he has to make content and to make my job work. Although the gear might be not be the newest, it's all okay because what we do mostly comes from here and from here, and that's really what matters. So without getting too deep into all that stuff, let's just get into my list. I have the list right here. So let's start off with the camera body. For the majority of the year, I was on the Sony a7 III. It is a great photo camera, a great video camera, it's a great camera overall. But as time goes on and as you grow as a freelancer and a content creator and you just grow your skills, eventually you wanna work your way to get newer gear. And that's what happened this year towards the end of the year. And I traded in my a7 III for a7S III, which is your, what you're seeing right now. I'm super stoked on this camera. This is honestly now my favorite camera of all time. I mean, I haven't used many cameras, but I think this camera is one of the best that you can have to create anything that you want with it. Honestly, it's, it's a beast of a camera. And like I said, I don't have the latest and greatest gear. This camera is two years old. It came out two years ago and I wanted to buy it at the time, but I just didn't have the funds to do it. And I had really planned out, well, I kind of did, but I was gonna be left with almost nothing. So I was like, I'm not gonna put myself in that position just to have the newest gear because I have FOMO. So I waited two years and I got it and it, it's worth it, it's worth the wait. I wish I did it sooner, but you know, life happens. That's how, that's how it works. Now, the next thing on my list is the MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Pro. Now this thing is probably one of my favorite upgrades that I've done this year. You can have the greatest camera, you can have the greatest lighting, you can have all the greatest gear, but what good is it if you can't edit it? Also note that I am a Final Cut editor, so don't come at me in the comments talking about, oh, you should buy a PC, this and I know, I know. I'm not an Apple fan, trust me, I don't even have an iPhone, but I am a Final Cut editor and that's what I learned on and I know my way around that thing really quick and I can get around it really quick and I can get my jobs done really quick, so I don't really want to invest time into another software right now. Although DaVinci has been uh, teasing me for a while now, but Adobe, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand it's industry standard. I don't know. It's, that's a whole nother story. Anyways, back to the MacBook. The M1 Pro chip honestly is a beast for editing. I know Apple can throw all these terms out there and innovation and this, this and that. And sometimes it's not real, but this M1 chip, I don't know what they did. They did some voodoo magic with this chip because I had the M1 chip right before this and it did good. And I thought that was great. And I was editing a7 III footage with it, no proxies or anything, and it was fine. But then I upgraded to the M1 Pro when I got my a7S III and wow. Like this thing can handle footage like nothing. I'm usually, I'm an editor that doesn't really, really create proxies. I've never really needed to. I, don't, I do a lot of music videos and pretty decent sized projects and I never like creating proxies because it just gets messy for me. So editing a7S3 10-bit 422 footage on the M1 Pro is honestly great. It saves me a lot of time, saves me a lot of headaches, a lot of stress. It's not like instant, but the renders and everything are pretty flawless to be honest. And I've loved every second of it using this laptop and especially the 16 inch screen going from like a 13 inch like I need the bigger screen back here as you can see I have an iMac and I have a video on this iMac when I bought it back in like 2019 and it was it's like specked out it's like top of the line but it's in, it's an Intel Mac this laptop I don't even edit on this anymore because it can't handle that footage I edit on my laptop which is pretty insane so I find myself sitting at my desk right here with my laptop there and my iMac on always doing other stuff but yeah it's pretty wild that I 
just edit on my laptop opposed to the desktop. So now let's move on to lenses. That's next on my list. I think this is another thing that really makes a huge difference in the quality of your videos, the glass, the lenses that's on your camera. Every lens can have a different look and character. For me, the Sigma 24-70 f2.8 art lens and the 85 millimeter 1.8 by Sony are two of my favorite lenses that I used the heck out of this year for all my music videos, for my content, for clients, all that with the 24-70 and the 85. Great lenses pretty much got you covered for anything you might need not only for video they are great photo lenses as well 24 to 70 you can use it for wides close-up portraits and the 85 millimeter at 1.8 man that's just like perfect recipe for beautiful bokeh bokeh whatever you want to call it it's a beautiful beautiful looking image that it gives you and I usually use the 85 millimeter when I want to do some product photography or maybe some portraits or sometimes the shot just doesn't look interesting and that lens will make everything look interesting it just gives it beautiful depth of field it's sharp it looks amazing so the 85 millimeter 1.8 one of my top lenses along with the sigma 24 to 70. i feel like i'm using my hands a lot i don't know i'm used to filming at the desk and now my hands are free so i'm doing some ninja action right here <laughs> Next on the list, I am also using right now. It is the Freewheel Magnetic VND filters. Now, this is one of my favorite tools that I've used this year. And ever since I bought them, I really can't live without them. Uh, they, they're they just such a necessity for video. Photo, probably not, but for video, once you get used to shooting with VND filters, and once you get used to shooting with like mist filters or whatever, and it, it's just, it makes your footage that much better. They come with a beefy set. You get a, you get a bunch of features honestly from this set they're magnetic super easy to use you just slap them on and take them off if you need to put the other set of vnds on there it's super easy that doesn't interrupt your flow it doesn't interrupt your creativity you don't have to wait there and have everybody waiting for you to unscrew a filter or screw it back on and you get a bunch of features you get two to five vnd you get to six to nine you get cpl filters you get an nd32 you get mist filters you get a bunch of different combinations and for the price honestly it's worth it they're always on my lenses and they're always ready to go anywhere I take my camera for video at least. All right, let's get into the next one. That is another kind of necessary tool. Yes and no, not really. Um, the DJI RS2. Like I said, RS3 is out already. I'm still on the RS2. Oh, well, what are we gonna do? We can't buy everything, right? We don't get stuff sent to us, so. DJI RS2 gimbal, honestly, it's great. Especially using cameras like the A7S III with some heavier Cine lenses or maybe the 24 to 70. Those are some hefty, hefty setups. So it's always great to have a gimbal that can handle that with a bunch of other features on top that are gonna help you get the right shot that you want and get the right angles and just, it's, it's an awesome gimbal to be honest. And I've put it through a lot of, a lot of strain and stuff like that. I put a lot of weight on it and it always works out. DJI is always making great products. I mean, they make a lot of drones and things like that. And their gimbals are no different. I love using their gimbal when I need to. And it's a great tool to use. Another one of my favorite tools that again, once I started using one, I kind of hate not using it is my Atomos Ninja and Shinobi monitors. I'm using the Ninja right now to monitor the focus on this because this is a manual lens. So if I move back and I move forward and I notice that I moved a lot, I have to stay within range. I can tell that I'm in focus because it has tools like focus peaking and I can tell that my audio is working because it has tools like uh, audio meters and it has tools for everything that you need for video and if you make video professionally or on YouTube or anything I think you need a monitor no matter what I mean you get the false colors you get the zebras you get everything to make your footage look how you want it you can load LUTs on there it's just a great piece of tool that you have to have as a videographer as a freelancer if you want to get your footage looking right and also it's better than looking at the three inch little crappy Sony screen way better than that because that screen sucks. I don't know why they haven't upgraded it, but the Shinobi or the Ninja 5 will do, and it'll give you some awesome looking footage. Whew, it's getting hot in here. It's raining outside right now. Uh, and tomorrow's New Year's. And that is my child crying. I do want to um, name some honorable mentions as a MKBHD would say honorable mentions. There's a couple of pieces of gear that I think are cool, worth mentioning, not going too deep into them. The first one is the small rig multi-tool. If you don't have one of these, I'll link them down below. Super cheap and super worth having, especially if you have a cage or anything like that, you're gonna wanna have one of these tools. It saves a lot of time. Pelican cases, I just started using Pelican cases this year and I don't know why I waited so long, worth it. There's a variety of Pelican cases you can get for all your gear. You won't regret it. Another one too, small rig and condor blue cages. Right now I'm using a condor blue cage. If you're doing video, you need a cage. 
you're gonna mount things, you're gonna connect things, you're gonna put it on tripods, you're gonna put it on things, you're gonna put monitors on it, you need a cage. If you're gonna be doing video and working in professional environments, you need a cage for your camera. Well, let me rephrase it. You don't need a cage, I would recommend having a cage. Okay, there you go. I like to advocate, work with what you got. And if you don't have the money for a cage, don't get FOMO, just work with what you got. But if you do, I recommend you get a cage. And the last ones is the SLR magic lenses. I just made a video on those. Those are amazing, they're awesome. I love using them. The last like two months that I've been using them, they're my favorite so far, so. But like I said, uh, there's a lot of new gear out there. There's a lot of new cameras. Sony's been pumping out cameras like no tomorrow. And who knows, I just got this a7S III and maybe in January or February or March, they're gonna be like, oh, the a7S IV is here. And I'm gonna be like, damn it. Why do they do this to me all the time? But like I said, I don't know. It has to be like something crazy for me to be like, oh, I need to sell my a7S III and get an a7S IV. But at the moment, I'm happy with what I have and I love working with what I have and me, like many of you watching this video, we don't have baller bank accounts to be just balling out on gear all the time. So we work with what we got. Work with what you got. Always like to preach, you know, get creative in here and get creative in here. And I think you're gonna make a lot more cool things than having all the cool gear. It's cool to have cool gear, don't get me wrong. And I wish I had the, the means to get new gear all the time and stuff, but it's not always realistic. Uh, a lot of YouTubers and stuff that have all the following and sponsors, they get stuff sent to them. And yeah, I mean, that's just how it is. But when you're just a small freelancer, small business owner, small creator like me, you just work with what you have and it can get hard creating videos because I know I want to bring you guys the newest gear, but I don't have it. So I just show you guys what I got and I show you how to make cool things with that. And my hands keep doing this still. <laughs> and this hand's been stuck right here. I'm like, I like this mic idea. I like this mic idea. Anyways, um, that's the video. I hope this wasn't too long. Uh, and yeah, happy new year. I hope you guys have a great new year's. Love your family, love your loved ones. Let's look forward to 2023. Let's look forward to better days. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video because it's already gonna be next year by the time this is up. So see you guys next time. Bye.